I fell in love with cars as long as I can remember, maybe two, three years old, playing with Hot Wheels, and then later on as I got a little older, playing with uh, remote control cars, building models. And then as soon as I get, you know, was able to get my driver's license, I borrow my mom's car whenever I can. So the love affair really starts then. And then I kind of got into auto crossing like anybody else did. And then eventually, you know, driving school, high performance driving school, racing and so on and so forth. So it's really integrated into part of my life. So whenever I drive my car, a spiker, first thing people would ask is, what kind of car is that? And I would have to go through the process of explaining it's a spiker. Then they would say, well, what's a spiker? And the short version, or the long version, depends on who you're asking, is Spiker built coach, cars, and airplanes back in 1880, and they went away in about 1926. They were bankrupt. But what had happened is, in about 2000, an entrepreneur bought the name of the Spiker right and created the Spiker cars. So today, what I, you see me driving becomes the product of what he created. Spiker was kind of uh, resurrected in 2000. By about 2002 or 3, they started making prototypes. By 2004 or 5, they started making the C8s. So my car in particular was built in 2006. It is a C8 Spider. It is a powered by a 4.2 liter V8 that is a Audi R8 or A8 engine. It makes about 400 horsepower. If you compare it to its contemporary, like a Ferrari F430, similar horsepower, but it's about 600 pounds lighter. It's got a lot of very unique features to the car and it really caught my eye and that's kind of why I bought it. So with the Spiker, it was a Dutch company back in 1880 when it first started. In the early 2000s when the brand was resurrected, they still built those cars in Holland. It's still true to its roots in being a Dutch car. The reason why Spiker has a propeller as a logo, they made airplanes once upon a time. So you'll see a uh, two uh, blade propeller as their logo, and you see a lot of propellers as their details. The steering wheel is a four spoke steering wheel. It looks like a propeller. The air vents also four blade. It looks like a miniature propeller as well. Even the aluminum wheels has 10 blades and it looks like a giant turbine. It's the first time I saw a Spiker was in 2005. I saw it at the, uh, the Monterey car show, and boy, did that car just uh, you know turn my head. The attention to detail, the pedal box where the clutch and gas brake is, the shifter and how uniquely linked it is, the engine turning on the dashboard, every single piece is aluminum, it's engine turned to perfection. The interior was just swathed with leather, dashboard's leather, eight pillars covered in leather, door panels are in leather, seats obviously leather, places you don't see is covered in leather. The attention to detail is magnificent. So these attributes, these designs, was what I kind of fell in love with the Spiker. I think one of the funny stories is that car, you can open the doors by remote. So I would secretly put the remote in my hand, hit the button, and the doors goes up. And they would look around to see who opened the door. So these are amusing facts that I like to joke around with them on the gas station or valet parking or at a parking lot or whatnot. It's great to kind of have a little fun with some of the fans that are not, uh, you know, prepared. I've got a sense of humor. Kind of joke around a little bit, yeah. What is the weirdest comment I got on the car? Is it a kit car? Does it have a Volkswagen engine in it? Is it based on the Fiero? And I go in and explain and defend that this is not a kit car. It's got a proper V8 in the, in the back and it's made in Holland. They had a hard time understanding that. They just still think it's a fiberglass kit car. Where, where do I enjoy this car the most? I love you know windy mountain roads and so on and so forth to clear my head, to really enjoy the drive. One of the design aspects of this car that I love is the fact that it has an abbreviated windshield. So the windshield comes up to about this big, this high, and the, between the A pillars, there is no structural bracing between it. So most convertibles or spiders has some sort of metal aluminum support that you can hang the sun visors on. This one doesn't have it. It really has an open cockpit feel. You look around, the, win the passenger and driver windows are frameless. There isn't the strip brace, I'm, there isn't the structural brace between the eight pillars. You feel like you're really out there, like riding a motorcycle in an open cockpit race car. You really feel as one with nature, and it's just an awesome sensation. With the abbreviated windshield, you do feel a little bit of the wind. The top of your hair kind of catches a little bit. On a cold day, a baseball cap or, or, or a beanie is, is recommended. 
you do get that sensation, but that could be good or bad. I mean, it went in your hair in a fast spider convertible. I mean, what a wonderful feeling. How does it like to drive the Spyker C8 Spider? I think two comparable cars that are comparable is the Audi R8 and the Ferrari F430. So this car is about 600 pounds lighter, similar horsepower. The wheelbase is about 101 inches. The biggest deal is that the rear track of the car is considerably wider than the front track of the car. So it's very much like a go-kart. So it changes direction very, very quickly. A little bit dirty at times, but you know, the handling is superb. It feels like a large Lotus in a Ferrari or an Audi R8. So where did I find a Spyker C8? So here's a tidbit. Spyker made about 240 cars. That's it. And they went bankrupt in 2010 and then again in 2015. So of the 240 cars on the Spyker C8 Spider, there's about 120 cars. And of that, about 70 to 77 cars came into the US. When I was in the market for that car, boy, it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. And I was kind of particular what color I wanted. I didn't want a black one, I didn't want a white one. So to find a silver one, it was a three year process of waiting till the owners decide to give those cars up. It took me three years to find it, 77 cars in, in the United States. And usually an owner of a Spiker has at least five, more likely 10 cars, because you know they usually buy a BMW or Mercedes-Benz as a first car, and then they may buy a Porsche or a Ferrari as their first exotic. So after they go through the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis, finally they may end up with a Spiker as a fifth or 10th car. So it's hard to find. Like I'm a caretaker for these cars. I don't own them. I'm just caretaking it for the next generation. So when I found the Spiker, it was in a great condition. So when I found it, I did the service. I you know, changed the belt on it and new tires. That's really about it. And I've been enjoying it ever since. So uh, how many cars do I own? Right now, my number is 20. Yes, I have 20 cars. I believe every car has a purpose. You know, there's guys or ladies that got 20, 50 pairs of shoes. Why do you need so many pairs of shoes? Sometimes you have running shoes, sometimes you have dress shoes, and sometimes you have shoes to go out and, and, and party with, so to speak. So to me, yes, I've got Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Porsches and so on and so forth, but the Spiker is different. It is special. Some people like to collect cars, some people like to fix cars, and some people like to just drive them. I fall into the I like to drive them category. I don't enjoy fixing them, and collecting to me is kind of a shame. I believe uh, all great machineries should be exercised and used. So I drive all my cars, and this is the reason why uh, I have so many. It depends on my moods, and each car suits a specific purpose, a specific purpose well. So the Spiker, because it does not have a working top, it is a convertible, it's really that 70 degree temperature car when the weather is sublime and I just want to go for a nice leisurely Sunday drive.